Hey, welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. And this is obviously another Photoshop Elements 12 video tutorial for you. What we're going to talk about today, as I'm sure the title has probably given it away, is the power of layers. Now, you know, I've taught layers many a times to many, many different students. And I think the big thing of Photoshop and Photoshop Elements is the power of layers. And not too many people understand it, and I don't think a whole lot of people use it. They just want to sit here and do the edit on, you know, the original image and not do the edit on layers. Now, let's go ahead and work with layers. The first thing you're going to do here on the left, or I'm sorry, on your right, <laughs> is the layers palette. Now, you can see the layers at the bottom. There's layers, there's effects graphics favorites and then there's more different things you can do we'll talk about more later on down the road right now in this video we are concerned about layers and how the layers are going to work and how you can interact with them the first thing I'm going to show you is the background layer is locked we can tell this by this little lock here where it says indicates layer is partially locked now, if you want to, you can double click on that and you can turn it into just a regular layer zero and it's not locked. But where you want to leave that locked and the reason you want to leave it locked is because you never want to work on the original image. That way, if you mess up or something happens in a layer, you can delete it and go back to the original image. Now, to duplicate that background image and make it so you can edit it, you're going to use a command or control J. You should do this every time you're going to edit a photo. And the reason that is, again, is so you can take and you can always save that layer there. Let me show you what I'm talking about real quickly here. Let's say we want to paint and we're going to be doing some kind of painting on our picture. I'll make a bigger brush size here to make it more dramatic. And I'm going to paint on my layer. So I go and I do some painting and do something like this to it. and. You know do something else here I'm just doing some uh, some masking or painting and I say whoa I really messed that up hmm now if I did that on my original background layer that layer could be destroyed I know of course you can always go to edit and you can go to revert but let's just say we're working with layers so all I got to do at that point is I could right click on the layer and just say delete the layer yes and now you can see you're back at your original image that is the power of layers. Let's duplicate that layer again. Command or Control J. And we can see now that we have that layer visible. So we have our layer one created right here. And now we're going to create some text on top of that layer. Let's just create some text, whatever it could be. This is my text. I can move the text around. You can spin the text because it's on, it's on its own layer, right? So we can do all kinds of stuff with it. We can spin it around here. A lot of people love to do this for scrapbooking. Once you get it where you want it, click the checkbox, and you can see that it's on its own layer. The next thing I want to show you is how to place an image on top of your image. And we can do that simply by going to File and Place. Now you do have to know the name of the image because you're working in your pictures folder and we're going to select these birds. Now wait, we'll select the eagle. So we're going to grab the eagle and you can see here that the eagle is now overlaid and it's on its own individual layer. Let's take that eagle and move it down a little bit. We can resize it. When you resize an image, always grab from the corner. A lot of people want to try to grab from the middle. Watch what happens. You distort the entire picture. Bring that back down here. Make the equal look a little bit more normal. And we'll grab from the corner. And it just seems to keep the perspective of the layer itself. We'll move this image down a little bit. Something like this. And we'll click OK. Now, once you start learning how to use layers... You're going to also learn about layer masks. And you know, if you've been watching my videos, I love layer masks. And the reason is, is because I can do so much with them. Let's create a layer mask. Click on the layer mask. 
and we're going to paint grab a paintbrush with black because black will reveal what's under when you're painting on white and white will actually hide So let's just reveal the flower that's under it. Just like so. Now this is just a really quick job here just to show you the power of layers. And you can see here what's happening is if it looks like it's really, really hard to get this mask to work, raise your opacity to 100%. And you'll see that you can get those edges and everything down. So we're actually revealing what's underneath and we're covering up what's on top. i lower my brush size down using my left to right bracket key here. And you can blend this right in. Just like so get up here between his legs here just like this and there you go very very easy edits very easy you've probably seen this before in my video where I merge pictures together I really truly love layer masks now what else is nice about layers when you're using layers is we can turn off and turn on our visibility we do that simply by just clicking the little eyeball right in front of the layer mask itself. So if you want to see your picture without something like, okay, what would it look like without that text? Well, I kind of like the text. Let's put it back. What would it look like without the eagle? Yeah, I kind of like the eagle. Let's put it back. Now, if you get rid of the background, of course, what's going to happen is you're going to lose all your background. So that's how these work. The next thing is you can link a layer with something else it's called grouping let's say that we want to add an adjustment layer so we're going to add an adjustment layer for um let's do levels and when we do this i'm going to close this first if we in fact double click this and do something with these levels you'll see that we're working with the whole photo that actually doesn't look bad, huh? But what we want to do is we only want this adjustment layer to work with the layer under it, the, the eagle. So if we do a commander control G, you're going to group it and it locks it with the layer below. So now you'll notice that we're only changing the eagle. And this is how you use an adjustment layer. Again, it's just showing you the power of layers. And it's just grouping it with this one right here with the layer right below it. If you, in fact, want to work with this, the, the background layer, let's add another adjustment layer. Let's do something like hue and saturation. And again, we'll group this with the background layer using Command or Control G. I do like to hide the original one, so I like to take that and hide it. I'll double click on that. And let's saturate the background. You can see now how I'm saturating the background, but I'm not saturating the eagle. Watch, I'll bring the brightness up, but the eagle stays the same because it's not grouped in that overall picture. And you can see that you can really get in there and add a lot of detail to your pictures. Editing is very powerful. And I often say in my videos, you'll hear me say over and over and over, folks, we're creating conversation pieces. That's what we do when we do our photo editing. Sometimes, like when I shoot weddings, of course, I mean, I may be cleaning up a picture, getting rid of some details in the background or something, or sharpening a picture. But when you're creating something like this to hang on your wall, you want something that looks interesting and it's going to be a conversation piece. So, folks, I hope you've enjoyed learning about layers here. Uh, it's a very short tutorial, but I wanted to show you the power of layers and how they work. The last thing I want to go leave you go here with, if you want to, once you're all done, click on your top layer, click on your bottom layer. You can right click on it and then you merge the layers down. I get a lot of emails that says, Jack, look, I merged my layers. I want to edit and I can't edit anymore. That's because you took everything and you compressed it down into one image. 
the best case scenario that I do is I go up, I leave my layers the way they are. Let's click off of those. I go up to file. I go to save as, and I save it as a Photoshop file. Because when you save it as a PSD or a Photoshop file, it retains the layers. You see where layers is checked right here. It retains all the layers. So if you want to go back and edit that picture later, you can do that. If you want to compress it and you want to take this picture and you take it out to your local uh, Kinko's or Walmart or wherever you uh, the finer development places or you use Shutterfly or SmugMug, you go down, you change it to JPEG, and then you save it. And when you save a JPEG image, remember, it compresses all the layers and changes it into a JPEG. That's where I get a lot of emails. It says, Jack, look, I saved my image as a JPEG to have it printed, and I can't work on it no more. That's correct. Save two different files. Keep a file folder for edits and keep a file folder for finished pictures, and you'll be a lot happier that you did. Folks, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube videos, it goes without saying, please click on the subscribe button. Please check out my website, jackstechcorner.com, and my new learning site, and that is at jtclearning.com. Click on the course link at the top and click on photography, and you can take the Photoshop Elements 12 course. YouTube videos are great, but it's also nice to go in order. You know, go from, like, starting the... the uh, starting the editor and seeing what the tools are and all the organization you can do. It's just nice to have a, a nice little course in order. And once you sign up, you're always a member. Thank you so much for watching my videos, and I hope to see you here again very soon on Jack's Tech Corner. Bye for now, folks.